All right. Little excitement before church. Ellie's really good at hide and seek, if anyone was curious. <laughs> It's time to begin, past time to begin, making sure no kidnappers go to church here. I'll run through our announcements real quick. It's a special Wednesday night. We've got a missionary couple here, and unfortunately, Art Smith accompanied them. He came as well. Uh, glad that they are here tonight. Art Smith, a good buddy, a good mentor of mine from my just three years at Crowley, short time, man, almost 10 years ago, 2015. So if, I, if I'm starting to feel old, I don't know how Art feels or... <laughs> We're glad that they are here. No adult class, typical adult class tonight. Greg Watts is going to take his singers. Y'all are going to take the adult class room in the fellowship wing. Everybody else, adults, if you're not teaching, are going to stay in here for a special missionary presentation. Grace Point decided to support Alex and Bailey. Commissary is their local support church, so that's why Art Smith, one of the ministers at Commissary, is here. I'll run through our announcements fast. Check Facebook and email if you can't. Keep, uh, keep along. Lance Brown is dealing with a lot of back pain. He's actually, uh, he says it hurts enough he's having trouble walking. Um, so he's seeing a specialist Friday for answers. Sciatica nerve is what he's thinking, but he'll see a specialist pray for recovery and, and uh, relief from pain for Lance Brown. I guess it's all that golfing. Hopefully that's all it is. Hopefully they can get that fixed. Pray for Dorothy Jones as well. She says she expects an upcoming loss in the family. Uh, and Sister Dorothy deserves our prayers anyway, so continue praying for her. Lenny Riley has a surgery plan for a hysterectomy to remove cancer on September 19th at St. Bernard. So pray for Lenny and pray for Mr. George as well with his birthday on Monday. Pray for the Riley family. Marty Blankenship is back home after a brief stay in the hospital. He had a stroke after all. That's what it wound up being. And, of course, after that stay in the hospital, he's worn out. So calls and, appreciated, uh, calls and prayers are appreciated for Marty. Carly and Morgan Ranson have COVID. That gum thing won't leave us alone. It's, I think it's just here forever now. They have COVID, so please pray that for their recovery that it's a light case as well. Uh, Marfa, Marva Ratliff and Kyle Burgess are out from COVID quarantine. Miss Marva is still battling with some symptoms. There's a meal train being set up for Paige Burgess and her family after the birth of baby Tanner. Please check the Facebook for more info about bringing them food. We're going to start back our area-wide congregational second Sunday night singings on September 8th. They're going to be every Sunday, uh, every second Sunday night through November starting next month. So grab a flyer, share the Facebook event when I create that. Really invite some people. Great, encouraging worship last Last time I know it will be again tonight was our first Wednesday night meal thank you so much to everybody who brought food tonight and if you stuck around and cleaned the kitchen they may still be in there right now cleaning I really appreciate you to keep this going oftentimes Wednesday nights generally if you weren't aware end up being one person's responsibility Unacceptable. I <laughs> can't do that, or we just won't have Wednesday night meals, and we're going to miss out on a great uh, fellowship opportunity. So if you can help, prepare some food, talk to Mike Frazier, talk to Jamie. If you can help clean, if you want to donate money, let somebody know. There's going to be a new shut-in team to help those who cannot attend services and of those who are of poor health. There's a sheet in the foyer to sign up for more info. Uh, the more that sign up, the easier that's going to be. It's primarily taking communion to people on Sundays, among other things. Those who sign up are going to have a brief meeting after service on this Sunday. Already said, Alex and Bailey Bunch, local African missionaries that we decided to support, are here during class time. Art Smith will do the Devo. Adults stay in here. A new class quarter starts in September. Please, if you'd like to teach, let Tyler know uh, that you can teach a class or co-teach a class if that's more comfortable. There's a list that's posted in the Facebook group. Two more. The Coburn family would like to invite everyone for a drop-in 90th birthday party for Miss Fern Coburn at the Ridgecrest Nursing Center September 8th. From 2 to 4 p.m., come join us for cake, ice cream, punch, and, and to shower her with love, hugs, and birthday cards. We hope to meet a goal of 90 cards for her 90th birthday. So please write her a card and drop in to celebrate this special lady. We all love Miss Fern. And then the last thing I had, if we missed anything, let Jamie know. The ladies' class is going to resume Monday, September 9th at 10 a.m. in the church office for their weekly study. Uh, look forward to that, ladies. I'll go ahead and have our opening prayer. Randy 
Larison will lead our singing. Art Smith will have the devotional. And then to dismiss us for class time, Donald Braden will have our closing prayer. Let's go ahead and begin with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to come to worship you today. Uh, with the beautiful weather today, Father, with the health that so many of us have, with the freedoms that we all have, we take so much for granted, Father, and especially tonight as we're mindful of those working overseas to foster your love and your church in areas where wealth is a different prospect entirely. We pray that you always help us remember how blessed we are and how great a life we truly have here, that we always make time to worship you. And we pray for the missionaries and those who work overseas. We pray especially for the Bunch, uh, the Bunch family and the work that they're doing in Africa. We pray that you guide them and are with them every step of the way. We pray for the worship tonight that is pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Jason and Jamie are pretty good parents. I'd have gave up on me like. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You're young enough. 535 verses 1 and 3. 535 verses 1 and 3. I'm in the way, the bright and shining way. I'm in the glory land way. Telling the world that Jesus saves today. Yeah. I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. Heaven is nearer and the way groweth clear. For I'm in the glory land way. Onward I go rejoicing. Take a little look at Luke chapter 9, if you'd like to turn your Bibles there, Luke the ninth chapter. And I'm going to read uh, Let me see here. 
verses uh, 49, 51 actually, 51 through 56, Luke chapter 9. When the days were approaching for his ascension, he was determined to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers on ahead of him, and they went and entered a village of the Samaritans to make arrangements for him. But they did not receive him because he was traveling toward Jerusalem. When his disciples James and John saw this, they said, Lord, you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them and said, you do not know what kind of spirit you are of. For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them, and they went on to another village. You may remember the movie Saving Private Ryan, 1998, and it was a movie about some U.S. soldiers that went behind enemy lines to rescue a paratrooper, fictional movie based upon a true story. And the enemy territory there was Europe. The enemy territory in our story here that we just read was Samaria. And I titled this little lesson, and I'm not going to be here very long. Uh, Craig said I had 10 minutes, and uh, Chase said I had 5 minutes, and so uh, maybe 7 and a half minutes or 12 and a half minutes, however you divide that up. Uh, but uh, the title of this is uh, Going into Enemy Territory entering enemy territory. Jesus was not afraid to enter enemy territory. Samaria is where he was. You know, the nation of Israel split in two in 931 BC. You had a northern kingdom, you had a southern kingdom. Northern kingdom was called Israel. It was comprised of 10 tribes. Southern kingdom was called Judah. It was uh, comprised of, of two tribes, Judah and Benjamin. In 722, the northern kingdom, Israel, fell to the Assyrians. And Assyrians carried the people into captivity, all the way to Assyria, hundreds of miles away. And then they took some of their low-life people from Assyria, uh, brought them back into the northern kingdom, and transplanted them there. And through the years, the Jews that had been left behind in a northern kingdom intermarried with the Gentiles that were from uh, Assyria, and they formed a new group of people, and they were called Samaritans after the capital city of Samaria. By the time that the first century rolled around, the Jews and the Samaritans did not get along. Even though the Samaritans were part Jewish, the Jews considered them to be dogs, and the Roman province of Samaria was located between Galilee to the north, Judea to the south. And if a Jew was traveling from Galilee to um, uh, Judea or from Judea to Galilee, instead of going through Samaria, he'd cross over the Jordan River, go up the east side, and then cross back over the Jordan River to enter into the place where he was going, even if it took him a couple extra days. People of the Jewish nation did not like the Samaritans. Samaria was enemy territory, but Jesus was not afraid to go into enemy territory. But the early Christians were hesitant to do that. They were hesitant to evangelize among the Samaritans. They were hesitant to enter enemy territory. They were hesitant to uh, evangelize the Gentiles. Even though Jesus said, go teach all nations, when he gave the Great Commission, Matthew 28 and verse 19. Mark's account says, go into all the world. And yet, whenever the church got started on a day of Pentecost, whenever 3,000 people became Christians, you know the story, it's told there in Acts chapter 2. And Jesus said to his disciples, his apostles, before he went back to heaven, you are going to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the whole world. Acts 1 and verse 8. Well, did they do that? They finally went into Samaria. Philip did. You read about it in Acts 8. You read uh, where he converted uh, the Samaritans. But you know, that probably was as much as six years after the church had begun. And then you read about uh, Peter uh, 
converting the family of Cornelius. Cornelius was the first Gentile convert. We read about that in Acts chapter 10. That's probably 10 years after the church was started because these early Christians had a hard time accepting the fact that you might have to enter into enemy territory. Jesus wasn't afraid to, but these early Christians seemingly were. Entering enemy territory is not easy. In a minute, you're going to hear Alex Bunch give a report on the work in Mozambique, Africa, and the commissary congregation is very happy to be sponsoring Alex and, and the Bailey and, and their daughter, Daisy. They're not afraid to enter enemy territory. They've not been afraid to sell everything they had, their house, their cars, a lot of their possessions, give up good jobs, get on an airplane, fly to a country where they'd never been, and serve the Lord in enemy territory. You say, that's wonderful, and it is wonderful. We appreciate this congregation for having a part in that, to allow them to go across enemy lines. But you know what? You don't have to go very far to enter enemy territory. There's enemy territory all around us. There's enemy territory in Greene County where I live. There's enemy territory where you are. You don't have to go very far to find the enemy. And so even though you may not ever go to Africa, South America, Asia, Australia, or some foreign country to preach the gospel, there are times when you're going to be in enemy territory, in your own neighborhood, on the job, at school, enemy territory when you have an opportunity to share the gospel with those that are lost. I'm happy for these two and the willingness they have to enter enemy territory. And may the Lord help us realize that the reason Jesus came into the world was to save souls. When he went to the house of Zacchaeus, he said, the son of man has come to seek and save the lost. Luke 19, 10, that's why he came. And Paul years later would say, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, 1 Timothy 1, 15. That's why he came. That was his reason for being here. That's your reason and mine, or it should be. May each one of us resolve, we're going to have the willingness to enter enemy territory and share the gospel with those that are lost. I'm saying this to a Wednesday night uh, audience. I know that among this group, there's some of the most faithful Christians you'll find anywhere that are willing to do the very thing that I mentioned, enter enemy territory. Tonight, if you're subject to an invitation and you need to become a New Testament Christian through penitence and baptism for the remission of sins, or you need to rededicate your life to the Lord, you have the opportunity as we stand and as we sing. against the light for sin and not thy heart be saved oh tonight oh uh, not tonight oh uh, not tonight
you bless us with father and again you bless us with a wonderful night tonight to be able to gather with the fellow christians at grace point and hear an inspirational word from mr art father do help us be brave and courageous when we enter enemy territory father it may not be as it seems and we understand that but help us be bold at work in our neighborhoods at schools and, and everywhere father to Reflect uh, the beauty of your son, Jesus, and to spread your word. Father, we thank you for Mr. Art and the lifetime of devotion to you and to your word and spreading your gospel and training and teaching. What a blessing it is to have him here, and I pray for safe passage back to his home this evening. Father, we thank you for the Bunch family, and uh, we look forward to anticipate greatly the, the message they'll be bringing us shortly. Uh, about their toils in Africa. Father, I ask a special blessing from you upon them to keep them safe in their travels, help them be effective and successful and uh, in spreading your word in the foreign country. Father, the, the prayer list we have is great with many needs and we know that you, you understand and know all these needs, but I ask your blessing upon each and every one, whether it be for health or comfort or peace, I just pray, Father, that uh, you'll surround them with your spirit and your love and make your presence known and heal them uh, if it be your will, Father. Thank you so much, Father, for your love, for your mercy and your grace, and especially for Jesus Christ. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. <laughs> 